meeting the lion of Judah, Hail Selassie. It was a bleak autumn morning in London. I had just gotten out of my routine meditation when all of a sudden some friends of my host visited. They were very excited and told us that His Majesty, the Emperor of Ethiopia, had heard of my experiential yoga teaching and had expressed a desire to see me, a yogi from India. Hail Selassie, thrice great, from the house of Sheva, was also called the Conquering Lion of Judah, the same title held by King David in the Bible. Selassie was 225th in descent from the line of King Solomon. Soon we were driving along in my disciples Austin Cambridge. Our guides, who had established contacts with the house of Ethiopia, were very happy to be party to this great meeting. I was told to keep this meeting a secret because His Majesty was a guest of the Royal Family of England and for all practical purposes to the African and Rastafarian religious communities he was thought to have left his bodily abode in 1975. However, this was untrue as I recall meeting with him seven years later in 1982. Our guest today on Meet the Press is His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia. The Emperor is a direct descendant of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, and he rules over the oldest Christian nation in the world. During his reign of more than 30 years, he has been a strong advocate of collective security. His troops served with the United Nations in Korea and the Congo, and he has been in the forefront of the movement for African unity. The Emperor played a leading role in the recent conference of independent African states. The Emperor will speak in Am Abyssinia, Ethiopia, the ancient country of Kush, also referred to as Kish. The Horn of Africa, anthropologically considered as the oldest country known to mankind. The oldest fossils of human beings have been found in Ethiopia. The Ichnish, also referred to as Lucy, 3.2 million years old. Kadunumu, 5.7 million years old. Ethiopia, the oldest known country mentioned in the Bible, the first country that is a country referred to and recognized as a country today. Genesis chapter 2 verse 13 clearly speaks of this river that encompassed the whole land of Ethiopia. The river is referred to as the Gion. The Gion is the river Nile. The river Nile encompasses Ethiopia and flows out of the highlands of Ethiopia according to the ancient papyri. The river Nile flows from the land where the god Happy dwells. The river Nile is perfectly aligned with the Milky Way, the very same galaxy that we live in. The very banks of the river Nile in Ethiopia is the very same area where civilization in general began. Science and mathematics had its birth on the banks of the river Nile. Even the concept of a god and the concept of worship in general began on the river Nile. In the book The Destruction of the Black Civilization, written by Chancellor Williams, it specifically shows us that Kemet, which is referred to as Egypt today, is the first daughter of Ethiopia. In the book of Kings in the Bible, chapter 10, 
first king specifically it speaks of the visit to king solomon by the queen of ethiopia the queen of the south the queen of abyssinia queen makeda referred to as the queen of sheba but the bible does not go in depth as it relates to this visit but there's an ancient manuscript by the name of the Kebranegas. And the Kebranegas, specifically, when translated into English, means the glory of the kings. The glory of the Ethiopian kings, specifically. The Kebranegas goes into the visit of Queen Makeda to King Solomon and shows that they brought forward a son, Menelik I, the product of their union. But the Kebranegas also goes into the spirit of God. It speaks of the pearl. The pearl is said to be the presence of God with man. This pearl or this spirit of God shall travel through a specific people and through a specific family lineage a specific bloodline until it comes to a specific human being this spirit or this pearl was said to have passed through abraham and passed through isaac and passed through jacob this spirit and this pearl is said to have passed through david and have passed through Solomon and has gone even into Menelik the first. Menelik the first took this pearl. Menelik the first took the Solomonic lineage and the Davidic throne and returned to Ethiopia where he became the king of Ethiopia. But through the grace and blessing of God, Menelik the first also took with him the artifact known as the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, according to the Bible, represents the presence of God. God dwelled in the Ark of the Covenant. When the high priest went and spoke to God, it literally means that he approached the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was placed in the Holies of Holies, the holiest of all rooms. This was the dwelling place of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant would not have gone to Ethiopia with Menelik I unless it was the will of God. The Kebrenegas says that Menelik I returned to Ethiopia with the firstborn of all the noble from the house of Solomon. And he also returned with the Ark of the Covenant again with the Solomonic throne and the David monarchy. The ancient spirit of God, according to the Kebranagas, the pearl, this spirit that shall reach to the Messiah, also returned to Ethiopia with Menelik the First. In the book of Acts, chapter 8. It speaks of Philip, which is the disciple of Christ, in his Amheric persona. His name is Iesus Christus. And Philip met this Ethiopian official from the house of Queen Candace. The Ethiopian official was a eunuch. And Philip taught him of the Christ that was amongst them, Iesus Christus, and showed the eunuch that this Messiah that you read of in the book of Isaiah is the same man that I know. And the story in Acts chapter 8 says that the eunuch took this order that was taught to him by Philip, the order of Christ, and returned to Ethiopia with this order. And this is why historically speaking, and archaeologically as well, Ethiopia is the oldest known Christian country and Christian kingdom in existence today. So when we understand this scientific move, 
which obviously came directly from the courts of God. That the Ark of the Covenant, the very presence of God, went to Ethiopia. The Solomonic lineage, the Davidic throne of which God says in the Bible, he shall establish a king forever and even he himself shall come and sit on this throne. But the throne now is in Ethiopia. How mystic it is that even all the firstborn of the house of nobles returned to Ethiopia. And then as we saw in the book of Acts in the New Testament, even the true order of Christ, not the regular Christendom now, not the make-believe mockery that was invented a hundred years after the Messiah left the presence of his disciples. No, we're speaking of the true order that the true black Messiah left with his disciples that went to Ethiopia. And that has made Ethiopia the oldest Christian country, not Coptic Egypt, but ancient Ethiopia, the oldest Christian country. All of this was done for a reason. And then the whole majestic ceremony of the 27th day of September every year in Ethiopia. It is referred to as the feast of the commemoration of Mascal, the commemoration of the finding of the true cross of Christ by Queen Helena. And according to the ancient prophecy, the cross of Christ shall return to Ethiopia. The cross of Christ in Ethiopia, the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia, the Solomonic lineage, the Davidic throne in Ethiopia. The lineage of the Messiah is in Ethiopia. Ethiopian calendar, 23rd day of July, 1892. Front us, a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Ever-Living Father and the Prince of Peace. He was the only surviving child of the union of Ras Mokenen and Waziro Yashima Bet. For the Union had nine children all died, and the tenth survived to become the 225th Emperor of Ethiopia. Born under the baptismal name Kremawe Haile Selassie, at a young age he took the name Tafari, an Amharic word that means the Creator. Liege Tafari was his name, for Liege is the title of a young nobleman. And Liege Tafari, even at a young and tender age, was considered to be very spiritual. For his father, Ras Mokenen, an official in the courts of King Menelik II, was always on his royal duties. So the young babe, whose mother died when he was very young, stayed with his grandmother and the legend says that once when Ras Mokanan returned from the royal duties his mother the grandmother of Liege Tafari gave him the child and said this is a very special child and she joined the convent of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and became a nun it was in 1896 that Italy invaded Ethiopia on its colonial quest but they were defeated and crushed by the hand of great King Menelik and Ras Mokenen and the Ethiopian warriors. Tafari was very young and at the age of 13 he took the title Didesh Ma, an Ethiopian title that means the keeper of the door and he also took command of a specific faction of his father's army 
At the age of 13, he was also governor of different provinces in Ethiopia. At a young and tender age, he was the governor of Sidima, the governor of Gore, and even the governor of Shoa. This takes us into the prophetic understanding because the oldest concept of a God worship, theologically the oldest concept of a God and a creator is that which is known as the Osiris mystery, that which speaks of the great God Patar, the Kemetic theology, that which speaks of Osiris and Heru. And it says that Osiris is the God man and Osiris was born in Ethiopia. It also says that Osiris at the age of 13 became a man. This can also be seen in the scriptures of the Bible where it says that the Christ child when he was fully 12 which means that he was 13 years old he also became a man and went about his father's work. In the same hieroglyphs of the same Kemet those that are seen also in the pyramid text says that Heru known as Horus became a man at the age of 13 years. This is prophecy. Historically, Haile Selassie I took the title the Deshmark, the royal title of a prince, and also became governor at the age of 13. A short time after, the Deshmark's Tafari's father Rasmakanan got very ill and passed this earthly life. The same thing went for Menelik II. And it was in 1916 that the Deshmark Tafari took the title Ras Tafari, which means the chief. And also he was the regent of the throne of Ethiopia. But officially from that time, the 27th day of September, 1916, it was considered by the Royal Council of Ethiopia that the ruler of Ethiopia was Rastafari. This was also announced and made very clear by the Empress, Empress Zaditu, the daughter of Menelik II. When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me, for in the new life I shall rise up first with God's grace and blessing. To lead the millions up the heights in the fire that you will know. Look for me in a world when I a farm. Look for me all around you. For a dark grave, I shall come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who have died in the West Indies, and those who have died in Africa to aid you in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. It was the 27th day of March, 1928. Elvis Park, Jamaica. Marcus Masaya Garvey specifically said to his audience, Look to the east, to Ethiopia, where a prince shall be crowned king. He shall be your liberator. It was in that same year, 1928, on the seventh day of October, that a prince in Ethiopia was crowned king. Rastafari who has already been governing Ethiopia for 12 years, now became king of Addis Ababa. King is not emperor, for all the provinces of Ethiopia had a king, and it was the king of kings, which was the emperor of Ethiopia. But Marcus Masaya Gavi in his prophecy says that a prince shall be crowned king. And historically, in Ethiopia, when Ras Tafari took the title Negus Tafari on the 7th day of October 1928, that was the very last time that a prince has ever been crowned king in Ethiopia to this very day. So this means that that prophetic word from Marcus Messiah Gavi could have only applied to one person and to one event and that is the crowning of Rastafari 
who on the 7th of October 1928 became Ligas Tafari. It wasn't until 1930 that Rastafari won supreme power at last and ascended the throne when the Empress Zauditu died. Crowned Emperor at last at the age of 38, Tafari took the royal name of Haile Selassie, meaning the mighty trinity. In the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 13, God clearly shows Abraham that his children and his seed shall go into captivity for a period of 400 years. In the book of Deuteronomy, it clearly shows that this captivity shall happen by ships. This is prophecy. Historically, the transatlantic slave trade, the great holocaust, the terror that was put upon the melanated people of the world, the original man, the Abyssinian man, the man from El Kebelan, the African man, what is known as slavery, chattel slavery, what is known as Jim Crow, what is known as colonialism, 400 year period. And according to the book of Genesis chapter 15, after this 400 year period, God himself shall send them a mighty and great one. Christopher Cologne, also referred to as Christopher Columbus, supposedly discovered the new world in 1492. It was in 1892, 400 years after that Kadamawi Haile Selassie I was born. According to the pyramid texts, it speaks of the oldest concept of a god. Osiris shall be resurrected after a 400 year period. Osiris shall be born in Ethiopia. The text says that Osiris shall visit Arabia first. Historically, it is the very first place that Haile Selassie I ever went, leaving Ethiopia, that is to Arabia. The glyph clearly says, again, that Osiris shall become a man at the age of 13. And Osiris shall be crowned king of the world and 72 officials shall come to his coronation. But it is also said that at the end of the coronation the very same 72 shall take the Osiris man and put him in the coffin and they shall cut him up into 14 pieces. Some rendition actually says that they shall cut him up into 16 pieces and they shall throw him in the river where he shall be underground for five years and after five years he shall be resurrected and shall rule and conquer his enemies and the story goes on to say that at his resurrection he shall become the Orion constellation where he shall govern both the north and the southern sky the Orion constellation is considered to be the Lord of the heavens the Orion constellation is perfectly aligned with the great pyramid of Giza the Orion constellation cuts the heavens in two for the equator of the heavens what is known as the celestial equator passes perfectly through the belt of the Orion constellation on the 2nd of November 1930, Negus Tafari took his baptismal name of Kadamawe Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, and was crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and was given the Davidic title of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Seventy and two nations were present at this coronation. Nations that came and bowed before Haile Selassie I. Governors and representatives of the colonial nations even in Africa 
came and paid homage to Emperor Haile Selassie I. This prophecy has also been given in the 70 and second Psalms, Psalm 72. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and the kings of the isles shall bring presents, and the kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, all nations shall serve him. And the scripture is precise. For Tarshish is considered by many theologians to be England. And it says here the kings of Tarshish shall bring gifts. And it was Tarshish, the representative of the monarch of England, the Duke, that was the first visitor to arrive at the coronation of Haile Selassie. Kedemawi, Haile Selassie. Psalm 72, which is a psalm for Solomon. The ending verse says here ends the prayer of David, the son of Jesse. Psalm 72. It was 72 nations that came and bowed before Haile Selassie the first. Psalm 72. The ancient theology of Osiris says that Osiris was coronated at a banquet and 72 officials came at the banquet and also paid homage to him. It is also important to take note a psalm for Solomon and here ends the prayer of David because the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of the Solomonic lineage, the Davidic throne and even the order of Christ was very important in the coming forth of the Messiah the coming forth of this great king that is to sit upon the throne of great King David. The Kebrenagas, the ancient book, the ancient Ethiopian manuscript, clearly shows us that when the Ark of the Covenant returns to Ethiopia, it shall put on flesh. It says that it shall bear three seals. It says that the Ark of the Covenant shall be represented by a king which shall be the final king to sit upon the throne of great King David. This is seen in the ancient prophetic manuscript known as the Kebrenegas. The Ark of the Covenant has always been considered as the presence of God and this is why David in Psalms 130 and 2, wished to build a house for God, which is a house where the Ark of the Covenant can dwell. For the Ark went from tent to tent, but now David desired to build him a house. It was King Solomon that built the house for the Ark of the Covenant, the temple for the Ark of the Covenant. So this is why in the New Testament, when Christ says, I shall break down the temple and build it up, they were wondering who shall break down this great temple that Solomon built. He said, I'm not speaking of this structure. I'm speaking of my physical self because the physical structure of Christ, the physical structure of the Messiah is the temple of God. It is the temple where the Ark of the Covenant dwell. So the Messiah, the Christ man, represents the temple that Solomon built. And this is why the Christ man is of the lineage of King Solomon. This is why the Christ man is of the family tree of great King David because the Christ man is the temple wherein the Ark of the Covenant shall dwell and this is why the ark of the covenant left the presence of solomon via menelik the first his son from the union of the queen of sheba and returned to ethiopia where it shall dwell continually and this is why his lineage the solomonic lineage also left 
from Jerusalem and went to Ethiopia where it shall dwell its original home this is why even the true order of Christ seen in the book of Acts left from Philip and went to Ethiopia where it has been established and Ethiopia is the oldest Christian kingdom historically known and this is why the Ark of the Covenant is very important for the presence of God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 10, it speaks of the dedication of the house that Solomon built. And it gives the day of the ending of the feast of the dedication of the house that Solomon built. And according to the scripture, it was the 23rd day of the seventh month that they sealed the dedication of the house that King Solomon built. Remember the house that King Solomon built is more than just the house that King Solomon built, but it is his lineage, his bloodline, his family tree. That is the house that Solomon built, the house of King David, the house of Solomon, the house of Sheba, the house of Menelik I, the house of Ethiopia is more than just a house. It is the lineage, the royalty, the pearl that the Kebranagas speaks of. So the house that King Solomon built was dedicated on the 23rd day of the seventh month. Haile Selassie I was born on the 23rd day of the 7th month, the 23rd day of July. sister in the Victoria Park and I looked up there was a man coming towards me which I found very striking he was immaculately dressed but he was quite small but very very powerful great sense of energy coming off him and he walked up to us and spoke to us and with great charm he had a very gentle gentle, quiet voice, very quiet, that he patted me on the head, and I can remember to this day the sense of being in the presence of someone who was more than a man. His eyes were very powerful, very dark, but very truthful. There was a sense of truth, honesty, perfection. And this is a memory that stuck with me all these years, and I'm pleased to admit it. Menelik II made a decree before he passed that all the emperors after him shall take the title the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lee Juatsu, who disgraced his throne and was never officially coronated, was disposed by the royal committee and the churchical council. Haile Selassie I became the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the only land of the tribe of Judah from that time when coronated in 1930. The 23rd day of July is also the beginning of the cycle of Leo, the lion constellation in the zodiac belt. The 23rd day of July, 1892 specifically brought to an end a seven year drought in the Horn of Africa, that very specific day. Revelation chapter 5 clearly says, And one of the angels said, Weep not, for behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed to take the book and loose the seven seals thereon. The coronation of 1930 was not just the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie I. It was also the coronation of Empress Waziru Menen. Never before in the history of Ethiopia, modern history specifically, has a coronation taken place where the emperor and the empress was coronated at the very same time, in the very same place, 
in the very same way. Haile Selassie I came and renewed the original tradition and brought back the philosophy with clear understanding of the Messiah being of the male and female polarity. Let us make man. By the time Haile Selassie was coronated in 1930, all of the states of Africa came under European domination, went under slavery and was colonialized. Ethiopia is the only African country that has never been colonialized, that have warded off the Italians and all the other Europeans when they invaded Africa on their quest to enslave the melanated man, the black man, and on their quest to colonialize and exploit the land of Africa. This takes us to the book of Psalms, Psalms 87. This psalm says that his foundation is in the holy mountains and the Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. And within these two first verses is the concept of all the African countries being colonialized and Ethiopia being the only African country and territory that has never gone under the colonial grip book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 18 clearly says God gave unto Abraham a land from the river Euphrates to the river in Egypt the river in Egypt is the Gion the river Nile the river Euphrates specifically runs through Iraq and runs through Syria and touches Jordan the landmass in between these two rivers is Northeast Africa, the Horn of Africa, parts of Kemet and Sudan and Somalia and all of Arabia. Father told Moses that he shall expand the land to the Great Sea. Historically, the Great Sea is the Atlantic Ocean, not the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean. From the Great Sea to the River Euphrates, the landmass in between is all of Africa plus Arabia. As we move on this understanding, the Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling place of Jacob. What does it mean when it says the dwelling place of Jacob? This means the place where Jacob dwells. Jacob does not mean one individual. Jacob represents a people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob and his 12 son and his daughter, the children of Israel, the generations that followed thousands, tens of thousands, into hundreds of thousands, until it became millions of people. They all represent Jacob. They represent Israel. They are the children of Jacob. They are the children of Israel. According to Amos chapter 9 verse 7, are ye not unto me as the children of of the Ethiopians, O ye children of Israel, the very same people. For the true Israelite is the prototype of the original man, the Ethiopian man, the melanated man. Jacob was an original man before he became Israel. His father was an original man and his father was an original man and so was his father an original Ethiopian man even before Israel was born. So the children of Israel are the prototype of the original man, the Ethiopian man, the melanated man, millions of years old according to anthropology. So it is obvious that the dwelling place of the original man, the dwelling place of the black man is Africa. Arabia was originally the home of the black man as well, going as far as even into India as can be seen in the book of Esther chapter 1 verse 1. So the gates of Zion, where is Zion? Remember the Kebranagas clearly says that Zion is anywhere in which the Ark of the Covenant dwells. We already clearly showed that the Ark of the Covenant dwells in Ethiopia. This is why the first verse of the 87th Psalm says, His foundation is in the holy mountains, the Simeon mountains, Ras 
Dashan, the highest region, Ethiopia. And the Lord loveth the gates of Zion, where the ark dwells, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. And this is why Ethiopia is the only African country that never went under the colonial grip when all the African countries from Ghana to Mozambique and Southern Africa and Northern Africa and Chad and you could name it they all went under the colonial grip while Ethiopia Abyssinia is the only African country that never went under the colonial grip and this is why even the third verse goes on to say that glorious things are spoken of thee O city of God and this is why we can highlight that the oldest structure of a human being is found in Ethiopia glorious things are spoken of thee O city of God this is why we can highlight that the first country mentioned in the Bible that is a recognized country today is Ethiopia glorious things are spoken of thee O city of God this is why we can say civilization even the concept of God the concept of a God worship all of this came from Ethiopia again glorious things are spoken of thee O city of God Rastafari. the fourth verse goes on to say I will make mention of Rahab and I will make mention of Babylon and to all them that know me and behold Philistia and behold Tyre so he makes mention of all these countries and he highlights them Philistia and Tyre and ask them to behold with a specific country Ethiopia because a great man is going to come out of Ethiopia a great being is going to be born in Ethiopia and not just Ethiopia is supposed to observe this he's going to make mention to all the countries of the earth this is why we can highlight that 72 nations including the same colonializers had to come and bow at the feet of the greatest of all Emperor Haile Selassie the first so I will make mention of Rahab and of Babylon and to all of them that know me and behold Philistia and behold Tyre with Ethiopia for in her this man was born there and of Zion the same land where the ark of the covenant is it shall be said this and that man was born in her and the highest which is a very key word this man is referred to as the highest and the highest himself shall establish her so it is obvious with the precise description of the land where Israel dwells which is a key component here because they would want you to believe that the land of Israel is just little old Palestine and for sure they wish that you would fall for the trap that the true Israelites are the Israeli Jewish people but with the true understanding that the real land of Israel is all of Africa plus Arabia including Palestine and the true Israelites are the melanated people the black people of the earth and the scripture shows you that God loves Zion more than all the dwelling places of Israel and you could comprehend that Zion according to the Kebra Nagas is where the Ark of the Covenant dwells the Zion that we know is where Lady Zion which is the presence of God is and that God loves this Zion the holy mountains more than all the dwelling place of Jacob historically again all the dwelling places of Jacob went under the colonial grip except Zion except the place where the Ark of the Covenant is except Ethiopia and of Zion it shall be said that this and that man was born in her the very same Ethiopia and again a very key word the highest himself shall establish her 
who is her zion ethiopia the highest shall establish her this can be proven historically Rastafari made a very dynamic move. He took the country of Abyssinia, Ethiopia and brought it very strategically into an organization which is known as the League of Nations. The League of Nations was established in 1919 after World War I and it was established to keep peace on the planet Earth. No other war was expected to arise at the inception of the League of Nations. At that time, the League of Nations was dominated by the European world. Ethiopia was the only African country that had a free monarch. And Rastafari took the monarchy of Ethiopia and brought it amongst the nations of the enslavers, the nations of the colonializers. And at the coronation of Haile Selassie in 1930, Ethiopia became a country in the League of Nations, not just a free black country, not just a free black country with a black leader, nor a black king, but a black emperor something that was never expected and never heard of before. In 1935, Italy launched a dreadful attack on Ethiopia. Italy came in with its tanks and its planes and its ammunition and its bombs. Italy was also a member of the League of Nations and according to the League of Nations article 16 of its protocol it is illegal for one member of the League of Nations to attack another member in the very same League of Nations and if it arises that such happens all the other members of the League of Nations are to immediately sever themselves from the villain or the miscreant. The villain in this case was Mussolini and Italy. So the League of Nations was supposed to sever or cut off Italy immediately. Instead they voted on it and the votes took months and the months went into years and Italy was bombarding Ethiopia and they were even using mustard gas which was illegal according to legal warfare and it was not even a legal warfare. Emperor Haile Selassie I went on the battlefield. Emperor Haile Selassie I was on the front line of the war. For the last time, Ethiopia's warlords and warriors assembled in Addis Ababa. Solemnly, they circled St. George's Cathedral, drawing strength from heaven and the emperor as the invading armies drove deeper into Ethiopia. For the last time, the emperor led the procession around the Coptic church, heart of an ancient Christian tradition threatened by Rome. The League of Nations turned their back on Ethiopia. The League of Nations expected Mussolini and Italy to win the war. Haile Selassie, on the 5th of May 1936, left Ethiopia. On his way to Geneva, Switzerland, to address the League of Nations. Haile Selassie addressed the League of Nations on the 30th of June 1936. The League of Nations has never been addressed by a head of state. It has always been representatives. It has always been envoys. 
Kings, it has always been foreign ministers, but the head of state would not address the League of Nations. This was a break of protocol. Haile Selassie I says he cannot send anyone to address the League of Nations. He himself has to address the League of Nations. And he addressed the League of Nations. He is the only head of state to have ever spoken to the body which represented the leaders of the world. He did not speak as just a leader. He spoke as an African leader. He spoke as a black leader, not a black president, not a black prime minister, not even just a mere black king. He spoke as a black emperor of a free black African country to the colonializers of the world. And he made it clear that the match and the spark that was lit in Ethiopia shall burn throughout Europe. And this is exactly what took place for World War II began and the same European countries that were in the League of Nations began to fight against each other and historically let it be known that when World War II was in its heights, Ethiopia was already out of the war and Mussolini had already died, keeping in mind that he died at the hands of his own people. But Haile Selassie I, when he went to the rostrum to address the League of Nations, the Italians began to boo him and jeer at him, but he just calmly watched them and kept his perfect poise until silence came again. We waited for Haile Selassie, the king about whom my grandfather had told me many stories. It is said that Haile Selassie was a visiting board member of the League of Nations. This was the international organization before the United Nations had formed. During an international meeting, a miscreant drew a pistol to shoot the king. He did not move, but steadily looked the murderer directly in the eyes. Consequently, the man dropped his pistol and was led away by the security guards. Revelation clearly says, that Christ shall return with a two-edged sword in his mouth and with this sword he shall smite the wicked. The sword in his mouth is his words. What comes out of his mouth is his words. Look at the word sword, S-W-O-R-D. When you remove the S from the beginning and put it at the end, you get the word words. He shall come with a two-edged sword. Two-edged, the S at the beginning and the S at the end in his mouth. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8 Therefore wait upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 and that was the 8th verse clearly showing you that the day will come when the creator of all, the highest himself, shall rise up to the prey and he shall gather all nations. This is actually his determination so that he can assemble them to speak to them and pour upon them his indignation even his fierce anger and he is also declaring here in Zephaniah that the whole world will be filled with his wrath and be devoured by the fire of his jealousy but this scripture goes on to confirm that it's speaking of the event of the 30th of June 1936 when Haile Selassie I addressed the League of Nations. It says in the ninth verse, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliant, 
even the daughter of my disperse shall bring mine offerings and this is very clear because when Haile Selassie the first addressed the League of Nations he spoke to them in Amharic and this is the Ethiopian language now it was protocol again to address the League of Nations in French or in English or Spanish or some European language of which Haile Selassie could have done as a matter of fact he began in French by saying good day to everyone and in French he told them that he's going to address them in Amharic so his words could have more meaning remember this is the Lord speaking and he's putting out his fierce anger so he shall turn unto them not English he shall speak to them according to Zephaniah in a pure language from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia my suppliant and suppliant is a word that means these who I plead for and this is exactly what he was doing there he was pleading for his people that were being destroyed at the hands of the European nation known as Italy he was pleading for the ammunition and weapons that the League of Nations were supposed to supply him. They were supposed to sever themselves from Italy because of its misdoing. And the survivors breathed freely once more. Among them came the Emperor to visit and cheer the wounded and to signify his respect for the dead. The numbers of the victims had been given variously, but here you may see the validity of the reports of considerable casualties. And may mourn with us the fact that these then it goes on to say the daughter of my disperse disperse means my people that are scattered all over and Haile Selassie made mention of all of his exiles that were in Egypt some of them went to Kenya some of them went to Jerusalem some of them was in England and other parts of Europe Haile Selassie was not the father of a few children he was the father of his whole nation so he was pleading for them, his suppliant, the daughters of his disperse. He spoke unto these people in Amharic, a pure language. The scripture says the language came from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Who is speaking? Verse 8, Zephaniah chapter 3. The Lord shall gather all nations. That is his determination. And he will pour on them his wrath and his indignation for the whole world shall be devoured by his fierce fire of jealousy. Rastafari The League of Nations continued to deny the Ethiopians the justice that they deserve. Haile Selassie I, according to his own words, spent three and a half years in England. But according to the second volume of the autobiography of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I, it was the 10th of June 1940 that he began his return to Ethiopia. And within a year, 1941, specifically on the 5th of May, Haile Selassie I, regained his throne, specifically returned to Ethiopia and liberated his country. And this is why the 5th of May is considered in Ethiopia as Ethiopian Liberation Day. According to the Osiris mystery, Asa, the Great One, was born in Ethiopia. He became a man at 13. The story of Asa is parallel to that of the Christ in the Bible. For Asa was seen as a lamb. Asa was seen as the lion. Asa was baptized at the age of 30 by Anpu, Anubis. But according to the story of Asa, he was coronated and 72 individuals came at the coronation but it was the same 72 that betrayed him and put him in a coffin. Some renditions say that he was cut up into 16 pieces. 
we already highlighted that the Asa prophecy is mirrored in the history of Haile Selassie I who was born in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian king who became Deshmak at the age of 13 specifically coronated in 1930 and 72 nations was present at his coronation and bowed before him but when Haile Selassie I was betrayed by the League of Nations it was the same members of the League of Nations that had representatives that came to the coronation of Haile Selassie I just as the Osiris mystery says it was the same 72 individuals that honored him that still took him and put him in the coffin and murdered him some renditions say 14 some renditions say they cut him up into 16 pieces it was article 16 of the League of Nations those who betrayed Haile Selassie the first article 16 that clearly says that the League of Nations is supposed to sever itself as a body from any other member that attacks another member Italy attacked Ethiopia article 16 was neglected instead of cutting Mussolini off they encouraged him and pretended to vote on the issue Haile Selassie I took the full matter into his own hands as God and man we should keep in mind here that the Asa mystery comes from the oldest religious writing the pyramid text and this mystery is not a mystery anymore for it is fulfilled in Emperor Haile Selassie I. It goes on to say that Asa, after resurrected, became the constellation Orion. But it says that Asa took exactly five years to resurrect. Haile Selassie I historically left Ethiopia on the 5th of May, 1936. Haile Selassie I historically went and sat on his throne again on the 5th of May 1941. This is exactly to the very day, five years from the day he left. May is the fifth month, the fifth day, five years. Osiris is said, just like the Christ to have bore five bleeding wounds for his people. Osiris resurrected on the fifth year exactly. Osiris went on to become the constellation Orion and he ruled the north and the south. The United Nations was established after World War II. Haile Selassie I was one of the original drafters of the new constitution of the new United Nations. Haile Selassie is the only head of state that has ever addressed both bodies that govern the world. That is the League of Nations and the United Nations. The only head of state to have spoken to the bodies that decides the runnings of the planet. Haile Selassie I. The story says after Osiris is resurrected from his five years of exile, he shall become the constellation Orion, where he shall govern both sides, the north and the south. The only head of state to address both bodies in our modern time that govern the planet the league of nations and the united nations and he just came out of an exile that lasted exactly five years from the 5th of may to the 5th of may five bleeding wounds because of the 72 individuals that betrayed him the same ones that attended his coronation to fulfill the oldest prophecy of any god the osiris mystery all praises to the master of ceremonies emperor haile selassie the first
The book of St. Luke chapter 11 also makes it very clear. For he told them only a rebellious generation desires a sign. But the 30 and first verse of the very same 11th chapter of St. Luke goes on to say, And the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men and with the man of this generation and condemn them. The queen of the south, they asked for a sign. A sign of what? The coming of the Messiah. And he told them only a rebellious generation wants a sign. But let me give you one. And the one that I'm going to give you is that of Jonah going into the fish. And if that is not clear, let me just add a little more. The queen of the south shall arise in this judgment with the righteous man to condemn them. What does the queen of the south represent? Who is the queen of the south? The queen of the south is the queen of Sheba. South is Sheba. Sheba is Ethiopia. So in the return of the Messiah, in the return of Christ, not only shall he replay that whole allegory of Jonah going into the underworld and coming out of exile, but the queen of the south and her relation to Solomon, and obviously her son Menelik the first. And I would expect the Ark of the Covenant. And all of this returning to Ethiopia. Is a key component. For anyone to recognize. The return of the Messiah. For he will return. To sit upon the throne. Of great King David. The master of ceremony. By the mid-1950s, the colonial grip on Africa began to fall. Ghana got its independence in 1957. Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania got their independence in the 1960s. In 1963, in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, the capital, the Great African Hall was opened and the establishment of the Organization of African Unity was known around the world. This is why the 25th day of May is considered as African Liberation Day, for this is the day that the Organization of African Unity was officially established in Ethiopia, 1963. Haile Selassie I was proclaimed the father of Africa, for he gathered all the independent African countries on the one roof for the first time in thousands of years to speak of a United States of Africa, to consider the plight of Africa and look for the future of Africa as a unity, the economic standard of Africa as a unity. Haile Selassie I established that and he began the process of breaking the colonial grip off of the African countries that were colonialized. When he visited the United States in the very same year 1963, President Kennedy made it clear that there is no leader upon the planet that we can compare to Haile Selassie I and his great work in uniting his people in Africa and bringing forward dozens of independent countries in a very short time of a space of less than seven years was an outstanding feat. Kennedy lost his life within weeks. Haile Selassie I even returned to the United States and was present at the burial of John F. Kennedy. Haile Selassie the first passed through the Caribbean in 1966. By this time, the scripture of Daniel, chapter 7, was seen in the full accord. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair of his head was like 
pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands time, ten thousands stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. And I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. And consider at this time that all nations had to respect and honor Haile Selassie first. The monarchs of all the other nations of the earth, from Japan to China, they all glorified and honored Haile Selassie I. Everywhere he went, he was given the key to the city and received honorary titles that were given to only the most special of individuals. I beheld until all the thrones were cast down. And even in Jamaica, Haile Selassie gave 31 gold medals to the Rastafari and the 13th verse of the 7th chapter of Daniel says and I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an ever living dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed the ancient of days the master of ceremonies. Give thanks. According to the 101st section of the Kebunagas, it says that when the Ark of the Covenant returns to Ethiopia and becomes the king of all kings and put on flesh, two other individuals shall arise with the Ark, Elijah and Enoch. The mandala of two parts speaks of the return of the Maitreya Buddha and says that the Maitreya Buddha shall return in the first tripartite year of the 20th century. This is 1930. His name shall be Nega Juna. Nega is the ancient African term for the king. Negas, 1930, the Buddha, Nega Juna. It was 1930, Emperor Haile Selassie I took the title Negus, Negas. But the mandala goes on to say that Nega Juna shall give power unto his priest, Shanti Deva. Lord Pakal ancient mass clearly says that an ancient king shall arise in the east and at the same time a man that represents the Olmec shall arise as well a man that has beard and locks. The Osiris mystery says that when Osiris arrives he shall come out of the halls of Anubis and he shall give power unto his son Horus the priest who shall reign for 80 years. According to the zodiac belt, Haile Selassie I fulfills the prophecy of the Archer constellation 
and the archer constellation Sagittarius is but one of three constellations that are fulfilling a specific work in the ecliptic belt the archer and the serpent holder which is seen as a tall man with a robe and a turban and of course the man that goes to the north Hercules we shall explore these facts and more in seven give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life Emperor Haile Selassie I the power and might of the Holy Trinity the ancient of days and the light of the world Madani Alamek Zilebe the master of ceremonies.